What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're talking about the new insane Intel 13th Gen Raptor Lake CPUs. We've got some crazy benchmarks from Intel claiming up to 79% performance increase or 49% of performance increase depending on what task you're doing. But a lot of tasks probably won't be that much of a performance increase, so probably more like 10% on average. So without further ado, let's take a look at these new processors. So we've got the HX, H, P, and U series. And of course, you can see that uh, we've got H and HX for the extreme performance and thin enthusiast. And then you have the P series performance thin and light and modern thin and light for the U series, which will be like the ultra books and ultra thin stuff. Here's a CPU wafer and looks pretty freaking cool. I don't know exactly what you're looking at, but obviously a lot of transistors and stuff. So here's the specs for the Intel 13 900 HK. We've got a 14 core 20 thread processor with six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. So of course that means that the six performance cores are hyper-threaded, allowing you to double up those cores. And obviously the performance on those cores should be able to boost much higher than the efficiency cores. You can see the max turbo core for the efficiency cores is the 4.1 gigahertz you see here. And the turbo for the performance cores is 5.4 gigahertz. Now the integrated GPU you can see has 96 execution units, has a max frequency of 1.5 gigahertz and an LPDDR5 memory of 6,400 megahertz. Base TDP is 45 watts for these processors, but they can turbo up to 115 watts. But I imagine we might actually see processors, especially since this is an HK, we might see them unlocked and be able to go even higher than that for overclocking purposes. This is probably not the max TDP if you overclock it. This is all very similar to the 12th gen, but of course this is the, but of course this is the new Raptor Lake. So we're getting a little bit higher boost clocks like 5.4 gigahertz on the P cores, for example, that's a little bit better and should give us noticeably more performance than the 12th gen. Now it's not gonna be massive. The really big gains are actually in the HX series, but I really, before we leave this page, I wanna point out the i9-13900HK is unlocked and overclockable and because it actually has less total cores, it actually might be the best gaming processor that you can get. We don't know for sure yet. I have to see it, the actual performance, but I just wanna point out that even though the H series is the like three out of four tiers in terms of performance, but in terms of gaming, the i9-13900HK might actually be the best gaming processor Hard to say. So here's a quick overview of all the technology that's included in the Intel 13th gen. Some very important upgrades are that we're looking at DDR5 up to 5200 megahertz. Now it's gonna be up to laptop manufacturers to decide whether they're going to want to include the upgraded RAM options here, because it could also use DDR4 3200 megahertz. And for anyone that's watched benchmarks comparing DDR4 to DDR5 RAM, the performance is pretty minimal, except in certain productivity applications or certain games that are maybe a little bit more memory sensitive. But but for the most part, the DDR5 RAM is faster, but only by a little bit. So either way, that's still an upgrade. Um, and of course, Wi-Fi 6E is also coming standard now. And, and we're gonna get up to four Thunderbolt 4 ports with DisplayPort 2.1 and USB 3.2. Overall, this is gonna be a fantastic CPU for gaming and general productivity. The new Intel Iris XE graphics features endurance gaming, which means you can play up to four and a half hours unplugged on lightweight games like League of Legends and Rocket League. Basically, that's gonna be capping your frame rate and downclocking the GPUs. So you're getting optimal blend of performance and battery life at the same time. I'm really curious if you could actually get four and a half hours. I'm kind of doubting it, but certain laptops, you're gonna be able to take advantage of this. If you have GPU switching on board your gaming laptop, you'll be able to turn off your dedicated GPU and switch to the integrated GPU for extended battery life when gaming. But again, I probably wouldn't, I don't know, 30 FPS is pretty, substandard for a competitive game like Rocket League or League of Legends. It'd have to be more like, I don't know, a casual strategy game or something with like a single player Then maybe I would do 30 frames per second. Now XESS is also included on Iris XE graphics and that's basically the competitor to DLSS3 from Nvidia. So that's supposed to enhance the FPS. 
when using the integrated graphics card. And then you have Intel Arc Control, which lets you tune your graphics performance with some software. You, you kind of had some options with the integrated GPUs before, but this is gonna be a little bit more like, kind of like Nvidia's GeForce experience. Next up, we have the highest performance CPUs you can get from Intel, the 13th Gen HX processors, with the very best one being the i9 13980H. This has 24 cores. That is absolutely insane. 32 threads. So not only are we getting a bump on the number of performance cores from six to eight here, we're also getting eight additional efficiency cores. Now it has a 36 megabyte L3 cache, can boost up to 5.6 gigahertz on the max turbo for the performance cores and 4.0 gigahertz across 16 efficiency cores. That is just so much raw computing power. I cannot wait to see what the Cinebench R23 score is on this processor. Now this HX processor supports up to DDR5 5600 megahertz and a base power TDP of 55 watts with a max boost of 157 watts again. That's not overclocked. I don't know if this is gonna be overclockable, maybe. I'm thinking that this processor will be in those little bit beefier, little bit thicker machines like the GT77 or maybe like the SCAR 18 that's coming out from Asus that's gonna feature beefed up cooling and can handle these massive freaking TDPs. That's 157 watts, that is insane. So to be able to cool these beefy processors, they definitely need to use liquid metal, beefy efficient fans with big heat sinks and potentially vapor chamber cooling. I cannot wait to see which of these laptops comes out with which processor. Now, of course, the HX processors are only gonna be worth it if you can take advantage of these extra performance and efficiency cores in stuff like multi-core video rendering and encoding. So it's gonna be up to the user to decide which processor is the right one for them. I think the vast majority of users are gonna find the i7-13700H to be the sweet spot for long-term productivity and multi-core performance and gaming performance all wrapped up into a more reasonable price tag. I also think the i5 series from Intel is gonna be a fantastic bang for the buck in gaming laptops for 2023. But that largely comes down to price points and what you're gonna actually be able to buy these laptops for. We don't have any of that final pricing yet, so I'd certainly hold off on necessarily locking in on being like, I'm definitely gonna buy this processor unless you just have crazy amounts of money and you don't mind spending it to get something that is gonna be awesome. So going over some of the benchmarks, here is one of the benchmarks that Intel has provided us. We've got a i9-13950HX and an MSI GT77 paired with an RTX 3080 Ti at 175 watts. And then i9-12900HX with the same chassis, and you can see they also tried to compare the Ryzen 9 6900HX, but that's only 155 watt TDP, and the other two chassis go up to 175 watts, so I'm just like, what the heck is this comparison? It is not a very fair comparison, but it's probably the best one they could put together. Anyway, so this graph shows that the new i9 13th gen highest end versus the highest end 12th gen is 12% faster in games. That's pretty significant, but like I said, the i9 13900HK might actually be faster than the HX. We'll have to see, it's gonna largely depend on the chassis. Now with the spec benchmark, they're claiming 11% single thread performance gain with 49% multi-core performance gain. That is absolutely crazy. I don't think this is gonna to translate to more many of the other applications because you can see in game development, it's only saying it's 10% faster than 12th gen, which I think is gonna be a lot more in line with what we're gonna see in the vast majority of applications. You can see that we've got Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E Wi-Fi in here. So you're gonna have ultra low latency and good prioritization as well as Intel Bluetooth LE, here is the key features for the HX platform. We have broad memory support, so you, again, you can get DDR5 5600 megahertz RAM, or you can get DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. And again, very small performance difference there, but the DDR5 5600 is definitely just a little bit faster. Here's another performance benchmark claiming up to a 79 performance gain over the i9-12900HK. 
okay, I believe is what they're trying to say. This is a very misleading graph in my opinion. I don't know, I, this, is, this is Intel graphs. You can see that Intel also gave us some more realistic benchmarks here, claiming only a six performance gain in Premiere Pro, 12% performance gain in Photoshop, and a 15% performance gain in After Effects. Lastly, I wanted to share the complete list of all of the processors that Intel will be releasing in 2023. You can see their total number of cores, the base clock, the single core boost, the number of GPU cores. You can see that some of the HX processors have reduced GPU cores. And then you can also see the base and max TDPs. For what it's worth, these are all gonna be configurable by the manufacturer. And so just cause it says it can get up to 157 watts and you buy a little thin little 14 inch laptop with the i9 13980HX, you can't expect it to actually get to 157 watts cause it's not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna to need to still take the TDP on a laptop by laptop basis. So that's my overview of Intel 13th gen CPUs for 2023. I'm really excited. I'm probably gonna upgrade my Lenovo Legion 7i to a new RTX 4000 series with Intel 13th gen, but I'm still waiting to see what AMD comes out with tonight. I still have yet to go to the keynote. I've got to go to that tonight. It's gonna be very interesting to see. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. I should hopefully have a video. I should have a video tomorrow covering whatever AMD decides to announce tonight. And I'm also gonna try to go to the AMD hands-on event tomorrow night. I also wanna mention, I'm gonna try to get hands-on videos with the Intel 13th gen processor laptops that are coming out if I can. So there's a link in the description down below to my CES 2023 playlist if you wanna check out all the videos I've put out for CES so far. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you wanna see more of my content, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time, Brandon out.